in structured interventions, but really not evidence-based educational programs, recreation programs. On July 22, 2015, Child Trends participated in a congressional briefing hosted by the National Prevention Science Coalition to Improve Lives. The briefing focused on preventing youth violence and evidence-based programs that promote positive youth development. Opening the discussion were Virginia Representative Bobby Scott. If you figure that out, I mean, instead of spending money on counterproductive prisons, spend it on a plan that will get young people on the right track and keep them on the right track, um, you will have a situation where you again reduce crime and save money. And California Representative Tony Cardenas. You, you want to gain office or actually stay in office, you can't be soft on crime in this country. Well now, it's not about being soft on crime, it's about being right on crime who were promoting the Youth Promise Act, a juvenile justice reform bill. The panel featured experts from multiple fields providing insight on the subject of youth violence. Among them, Dr. Peter Scharf from the Institute for Public Health and Justice at LSU, Dr. Michael Green of the Rutgers School of Criminal Justice, and Dr. Thomas Simon of the CDC. Also at the briefing was Child Trends senior scholar Dr. Kristen Anderson Moore, who discussed the determinants of youth violence, as well as programs that are proven to help prevent it. Most important, many of the determinants of violence reflect issues we would want to address anyhow. We want to address school success, child abuse, substance use, domestic violence, and unintended pregnancy. There is an added value in that they are all related to violence. The main takeaway, really, from this table is that much is known about what the risks and protective factors are for violence. If we want to reduce violence, we need to enhance the protective factors and minimize the risk factors. And as subsequent speakers will attest, much is known about effective interventions for individuals, families, schools, and communities in some. Violence is a malleable behavior. Levels of violence can be reduced. Second, there are common determinants of violence, and addressing critical common determinants, the risk and protective factors, can have a range of beneficial effects. Third, we know what the major risk and protective factors for violence are, with the caveat that we need to better understand the societal, community, and cultural factors that are related to violence. And lastly, we need to tackle not only risk factors, but also strengthen protective factors, like improving school climate. Thank you. For more information on preventing youth violence, as well as many other issues related to the well-being of children and youth, please visit childtrends.org or follow us on any of these social media sites.